So I woke up early to do a tremendous ride, but unfortunately it's raining, so I decided, you know what, let's bang out a video, because I haven't done one for ages. So today's topic is the lot of Yumbo, uh, Yumbo Visma Power Data. So obviously, they got three podiums in the Grand Tours this year, Roglic um, got third in a Giro, then Kreisberg got second, then uh, Roglic won it. Interesting to see lots of things, the weights, the power numbers, etc, etc, the transformation of Roglic. Um, first, I'm just going to go on the weights. They're very, very low. Kreisberg's about 178 and weighs 62 and a half kilos. That doesn't seem very natural to me. That seems, I'm not saying anything is dodgy necessarily, but that weight seems incredibly low. And when you look online at his weight, it says 66 kilos. Roglic again, I predicted just based on him. I mean, he's a big boy, I thought. He's pretty chunky if you look at his legs. Thought 68, 67 kilos, something, you know, like that classic Grand Tour weight. But no, he's 64. And then again, you think he's time trialing that while at 64. Like, there's a reason because he's putting some mad numbers through the buck. Mad, mad numbers. So we'll go through the Jira first, right? So this first one's irrelevant. I can do 6.7 watts per kilo for 5 minutes 30 when I'm in top condition. AKA, I haven't broken my leg. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's slightly irrelevant. Obviously, that was the crash, and um, Caleb Newton won that stage, uh, and Cara, sorry, Cara has won the stage, Caleb Newton got second. Uh, next one's stage uh, nine, San Marino. Again, I'm pretty sure that was TT, but that was good again, six watts per kilo for 24 minutes, so that's very solid. Um, but none of the numbers in the Jira are absolutely off the chart. Um, the best numbers he probably did was that half an hour, 5.9 watts per kilo which again is very, very good. You have to remember these aren't individual time trials. They are road races, so you have a lot of climbs beforehand, et cetera, et cetera. And then this one, I believe, is because the power is estimated. But anyway, we're going to look at this Motorola. Uh, he lost three minutes on stage. Uh, we'll see here. So you can see um, this is the final. So Motorola downhill finished the line. These boys were all in the break. Chicane, Hurt, and Masnada, And Vincenzo Nebley, who caught the... Carapaz, um, so Nibelin, Carthy got away on the climb, and then these boys caught up on the descent, and then you have to scroll their way down to see Primoz Roglic, so Roglic lost a lot of time on the day, um, and so then we can go over to the Strava file, and we can see sort of the times, so Sivakov did a 46.52, so he sort of lost two minutes, um, and I seem to remember they were in a similar-ish group, so I'd say, you know, he's lost about two minutes on the stage, and Nibali did a 44.52, so he averaged 15.3k an hour of 11% gradient, which is pretty rapid, to be honest. That's well over, that's sort of six watts per kilo plus. Um, because if we look at Jan Hertz, uh, or we look at Chikorne's file, um, for example, I believe there's his weight in here. And also, if you've seen any of the Eurosport data, they have, they often like to choose Chikorne because he posts his power. Um, they did it for Planche de Belfi as well. And you'll be able to see the sort of numbers that we're talking about. Um, so he did 44 minutes, like 360. Six, so 6.1 watts per kilo. Um, so you can see that Nibali is doing, you know, 6.2, 44 minutes. And that's, you know, obviously lost a lot of time. And Nibali and Carapaz at the same time. Carapaz does have Strava, but doesn't always post. He's also private as well, which is incredibly disappointing. Um, but yeah, so that's quite important stage for him, is that he could only do on that day 5.6 watts per kilo, I believe it was. And that's a lot, of, that's a big difference. 5.6 to 6, let's say Nibali did 6.1 a similar time to Chikone because obviously they had a tiny amount of drafting and also I think Chikone might his power might be slightly higher like obviously the Pami is read slightly differently so it's hard to tell exactly what it is um but yeah so that's that's the issue here you've got Roglic not being able to do that and the stage was hard it was kind of towards the end of the round so a lot of hard work to do stage so 17 again six watts per kilo 13 minutes isn't too impressive um so okay well then I'll just quickly go over Kreis Vike. Obviously, he did no attacks throughout the whole Grand Tour. He's yet to win, and he literally wins no stage. Obviously, this isn't throwing shade at him, because he's still an unbelievable rider, but I just think the way he rides is incredibly dull, and an architectural uh, GC rider. So, plunge about 36.2 was for 20 minutes. Again, at the Tour, that's pretty calm. Like, it was a hard-ish front first week, but nothing off the chart. Um, Tourmalade, five and a half, bit of altitude, but again, last 20 minutes, they really put it on with De Blues and Seb Kuz. Pret Dalby again, 6.13, solid. Libier, altitude, but still not, not mad at all. Izaran, that's where he got dropped. Bernal did 5.8 and put like a minute and a half into them, two minutes. So that was Giro for him. And Valtoren, that's some ridiculous numbers. Um, I know Nibali won the stage by doing about 5.5 watts per kilo because obviously he was up the, right, up the road. 
but 5.7 watts per year for like a minute, an hour and 17 minutes, it's, that is really, really, really hard, especially at the end of the Grand Tour. Obviously, it was a flat run and they literally rode down a motorway and then went full up the climb, but still, that's that's some next level numbers. And his weight, I still don't believe, like, we'll, we'll, we'll get Christ right now. I literally can never spell his name. Um, but like, he's 66 kilos and he's 1 meter 78. Like, what? What the actual fuck? Like, obviously, these weights aren't accurate. Garen Thomas is 68, uh, Ben Al's 58, but like, even so, that's mad, and that's the thing that's sh sh like shocking the most. Maybe his numbers aren't haven't been better since you know other times when he's d gone got top ten, but it's just his weight's gone down. But yeah, we're going to look at Roglic's power now, and you'll see a huge difference. So early on in the race, six watts per kilo for half an hour, have a Lambert. that was correlated well with what Pagacha did, and there is finished similarish time. So yeah, that was um, very very impressive early on. Um, and better than any of his powers here. I mean, apart from obviously that five minute thirty, but that's completely different. Master Costa again, six and a half watts per kilo. That that does agree with the numbers I've seen on Strava. Um, Fifteen minutes. So that's you know depends on his aerobic efficiency, but you know obviously you do at least six and a half watts per kilo for twenty minutes fresh. I'd say um, potentially more. Um, so yeah, that's again very 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 solid. But you know, Cortez was decent. That was in Andorra when Bogaccia won. Uh, I'll keep going Los Machucos again. I've seen higher numbers. I, people said it was more like 6.5. But again, 6.3 watts per kilo for 22 minutes in the middle of the stage race is absolutely bonkers. Um, and that means fresh. You know, he's been doing minimum 6.5, maybe 6.7. And that's when you realise that these boys are a different level to anything else. Most people think if you get over 5 watts per kilo, you're decent and like you know could, could go pro. Now, I mean, 5 watts per kilo is like nothing compared to what these boys push out. Like, their tempo is like five and a half. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely bonkers. And then Santuario de la Cibo is, that's that's the numbers. I've, I've seen on Twitter 6.7, but obviously I, I don't believe that. They averaged 19 kilometers an hour up a 10% gradient with some incredibly steep ramps for half an hour. Now, just try and ride a 20k an hour up a 10% climb for more than about five minutes and you'll realize that it's really hard like really hard and this is like the stage was hard well anyway we're gonna go find it so here it is this is the stage big boy pagacha you know, you got two we got you know, big climbs here big big climbs 400 watts he weighs 60 something gears that's probably 5.8 watts per gear again another climb slightly easier break had gone then 317 watts for like half an hour and then this last climb he does 420 watts, so obviously he weighs a bit more than Broglich because he got spat. But even so, like, um, it's ridiculous. This is this is the Strava file. Santuario de la Ciba por Casto de Lime. If I can't pronounce that right, let me know. My Spanish isn't top top. Uh, but yeah, 24 minutes, 37 for Fada, 19 kilometers an hour, up a 10% gradient. Um, Bogaccio did 421. Kuz is obviously in the break into 395. I mean, they're not much i mean james knox did 317 with 58 kilos and lost two minutes <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous these numbers like they're just flying and that's when you get a draft at like 19 20k an hour um so i'll go back to the back to the numbers here and that is a huge difference if we look at his best half an hour power is 5.9 goes to 6.3 cheerio thanks for coming that's why i want it he could climb with the best, he can time trial and just ruined absolutely everyone in the time trial. Um, I don't think they have any time trial data for him, unfortunately. But yeah, he's a top top guy. Um, and, you know, that's, that's it. You can see the final stage was not really that hard. 18 minutes at 5.4 and he had 9 at 6 watts per kilo, which again, is, for him, is probably like, nah, that's all right, pretty easy. So yeah, anyway, that's the data for the world to weight wise, the same. Okay, he started half a kilo lighter, but, you know, you're not going to see huge, huge weight losses unless you're Chris Froome um, in the Giro 2018. Um, but, yeah, overall difference between the Tour and the Vuelta is, is is big, but it's hard to tell just on the climbing alone. The way you tell us the Kildur is burnt, the normalised power over the duration, because, you know, you might be able to get higher climbing numbers if the racing is easier. Um, so, anyway, if you've got any more video ideas, let me know. Um, I need to start making more videos. Um, my riding has been horrendous at the moment because every time it rains, I'm like, no, I can't be bothered. But I'm going to try to sort that out. 
and actually ride my bike a bit more um, because at the moment I just need to go to, I go to the gym a lot more as I have some serious injuries. So anyway, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.